It was an ordinary day in November when humanity's gaze shifted upwards as one. The skies split open, not with the sound of thunder, but with a silence that blanketed the earth in awe. Vast ships, titanic in size and alien in form, slid through the breach from the unknown, lining up above the world's capitals with an elegance terrifying in its precision. Each vessel was a city unto itself, housing legions whose intentions were as obscure as the dark side of a moon. Phones dropped from hands, cars pulled to the sides of roads, and even the ceaseless markets stilled. A collective breath was held. The ships hung there, motionless, as if the very air of Earth was enough to hold them aloft. Then, as screens worldwide flickered to life, displaying the contours of these foreign leviathans against the backdrop of our blue sphere, a single message began to broadcast. A message in every language, every dialect spoken by human tongues. This message did not come with greetings. There were no platitudes of peace or curiosity. It was a decree, succinct and unequivocal, delivered with the cold clarity of a sword's edge. The voice that spoke was metallic and resonant, carrying the authority of a being used to being obeyed. The galactic dominion had arrived. It claimed sovereignty over this sector of space, and Earth, teeming with life and noise, had drawn its gaze. The ultimatum was stark. Earth must acknowledge this dominion, relinquishing its autonomy, or face consequences no world should ever have to confront. As the message looped, an undercurrent of fear ran through humanity a thread weaving together the rich tapestry of cultures and lives that dotted the globe. It was the kind of fear that whispered of dark futures, of chains and subjugation, of civilizations lost to the cosmos's endless night. And yet, even as some despaired, a flame kindled in the heart of humanity, a flame that had burned since the first human stood against the wilds of an untamed world. From every corner of the planet, a determination rose to meet the gaze of those who would claim the heavens. For while the Dominion had given its ultimatum, Earth had yet to give its answer. In the hours that followed the alien ultimatum, the world found itself ensnared in a turmoil it had never before experienced. From the bustling streets of New York to the serene landscapes of rural India, from the vibrant communities across Africa to the technologically advanced cities in Asia and the historically rich towns of Europe, the reaction was as varied as humanity itself. Yet, beneath the cacophony of global reactions, a singular resolve began to take shape. World leaders, often divided by borders and beliefs, found common ground under the shadow of the colossal ships. Emergency sessions convened, not just in the grand halls of the United Nations, but in every seat of government around the globe. The message from above had been clear, but the message from Earth would need to be clearer. The question was not just of survival, but of identity. Would humanity cower, or would it stand? As diplomats debated and generals readied their forces, a different kind of mobilization was happening. Across the digital landscape, a wave of solidarity swept through the global population. Hashtags like Hash One Earth One People and Hash West and Dazon trended worldwide, as people from every walk of life shared messages of unity and defiance. The digital age had prepared humanity for this moment of collective consciousness, turning individual whispers into a roar of opposition against the silent threat above. Amidst this wave of earthly defiance, a team of linguists, cryptographers, and diplomats crafted Earth's response. They worked tirelessly, decoding the alien message to understand its nuances and to formulate a reply that conveyed not just humanity's refusal to submit, but its readiness to negotiate as equals. The reply was broadcasted back to the fleet, a beacon of humanity's resolve piercing the sky. This response did not come from a place of hubris or ignorance of the alien threat. It came from a deep-rooted belief in the value of freedom and the rights of sentient beings to determine their own fate. Humanity was aware of the gulf in power that lay between them and their visitors. However, the history of Earth was a testament to the triumphs against seemingly insurmountable odds. The message encapsulated the spirit of humanity resilient, proud, and fiercely independent. As the broadcast echoed into the cosmos, the world waited with bated breath. Monitors showed the massive ship still looming, impassive and enigmatic against the blue of the sky. The silence that followed was oppressive, a tension that wound tighter with each passing second. Earth had spoken its peace, throwing the gauntlet back to the stars. Now, it was the Dominion's move. Would they speak again? Or would the next response be one of violence? 
the people of Earth could only wait and watch, hoping their unity would shield them from the storm that might come. As Earth's defiance echoed into the silence of space, a remarkable transformation unfolded across the globe. The alien ultimatum, a shadow cast over humanity's future, had ignited a fire of solidarity unprecedented in human history. In the face of potential annihilation, petty squabbles, long-standing conflicts, and deep-seated divisions faded into obsolescence. The human race, in its quest for survival, found itself united as never before. This newfound unity was not born of fear alone, but of a collective realization of humanity's intrinsic strength. Governments collaborated on an unprecedented scale, pooling resources, sharing intelligence, and aligning military strategies. Scientists and engineers from rival nations worked together, their combined expertise focused on understanding the alien technology and bolstering Earth's defenses. It was a global effort that transcended borders, with volunteers from every corner of the world joining the cause. Amidst this rallying of human spirit, special assemblies were formed, comprising not just of political and military leaders, but also of thinkers, philosophers, and representatives from various cultural and religious backgrounds. The goal was to present a united front, not just in terms of military might, but also to showcase the rich tapestry of human culture and resilience. The message was clear. Humanity was not merely fighting for survival, but for the very principles that defined it. As preparations for a potential conflict continued, the public's role became increasingly vital. Civilians participated in drills, while communities organized support networks for those most affected by the ongoing tensions. Social media and news outlets, once battlegrounds for ideological conflicts, became platforms for sharing stories of hope, courage, and unity. The arts flourished, with creators across the globe contributing works that encapsulated the human spirit's indomitability. Yet, for all the outward shows of defiance and preparation, there was an undercurrent of anxiety. What would the alien response be? The world's military, bolstered by newfound cooperation and rapid technological advancement, stood ready, but the unknown capabilities of the galactic dominion loomed large. Earth's forces prepared for scenarios ranging from diplomatic negotiations to full-scale invasion, with every satellite and radar array turned skyward, watching for any sign from the alien fleet. In this crucible of anticipation, humanity found its greatest strength in unity. The collective will of Earth's inhabitants, from the bustling metropolises to the most remote communities, was focused on a single goal, to face the coming storm, not as divided nations, but as a united species. The Earth awaited the Galactic Dominion's next move, a planet united under the banner of human resilience, ready to defend its right to exist among the stars. The anticipation that gripped Earth transformed into reality in a way no one had predicted. The first encounter did not occur in the vast expanse above or within the strategic confines of a negotiation table. It unfolded on Luna, Earth's moon, where humans had established a foothold in the cosmos, a beacon of their ambition and curiosity. The lunar outpost Alpha, a symbol of human ingenuity and the spirit of exploration, became the stage for the initial skirmish. The outpost's monitors, usually displaying data from experiments and observations, flickered with the static of interference before revealing the approach of several small alien crafts. They moved with a purpose, sleek and silent against the backdrop of space, their designs as enigmatic as the intentions of those who piloted them. The personnel at Alpha, a mix of scientists, engineers, and a small security contingent, found themselves the vanguard of humanity in the face of the unknown. The security team, equipped for potential hazards of space, rather than an armed confrontation, stood ready to protect the outpost and its inhabitants at all costs. The encounter began with a silence that belied the tension, the alien crafts hovering just beyond the outpost's perimeter. Then, without warning, the tranquility shattered. The crafts launched a series of precise strikes, not lethal but disabling, targeting the outpost's communication arrays and defense systems. It was a clear message. Resistance would be met with swift action. Yet, even as alarms blared and systems failed, the resolve of the outpost's inhabitants did not waver. Using makeshift defenses and leveraging the outpost's infrastructure, they mounted a counteroffensive. It was a display of human adaptability and ingenuity, using every tool and tactic at their disposal to fend off the aggressors. 
The skirmish on Luna did not last long, but its implications resonated deeply. The Galactic Dominion had made its first move, a show of force meant to intimidate and subdue. However, the resistance offered by the defenders of Lunar Outpost Alpha sent a powerful countermessage. Humanity would not be cowed by displays of power. They would meet force with force, defending their own with the full weight of their collective spirit. Back on Earth, the news of the encounter spread like wildfire. It was a sobering reminder of the challenges that lay ahead, but more importantly, it was a testament to human courage and tenacity. The defenders of Luna had set the standard, a rallying cry for the people of Earth. The battle for humanity's place in the cosmos had begun, not with a whimper, but with a declaration of strength and resolve. In the aftermath of the lunar skirmish, Earth's strategic command was ablaze with activity, analyzing every piece of data gleaned from the encounter. Amidst the strategizing, a tale of extraordinary survival emerged, turning the defenders of Outpost Alpha into legends. During the conflict, a small team of security personnel had been conducting a routine surface patrol, encapsulated within their suits, far from the safety of the outpost shields. When the attack commenced, this team found themselves stranded, cut off from immediate rescue, facing the vacuum of space and the alien aggressors. Their situation seemed dire, a likely loss to the cold expanse. However, the narrative that unfolded defied expectations. Utilizing a combination of quick thinking, unparalleled bravery, and a deep-seated will to survive, the team managed to repel a direct assault from one of the alien crafts. Armed with nothing but standard-issue weapons and their wits, they inflicted damage upon the alien vessel, a feat thought impossible given the technological gap between the combatants. This act of defiance and skill turned the tide, providing the outpost with the crucial moments needed to mount its defense. More astonishingly, each member of the patrol team survived the encounter without serious injury, despite being exposed to extreme risk. Word of their survival and valor spread quickly upon their return, tales of their encounter embellished with each retelling. They were no longer just soldiers, they had become something more in the eyes of their fellow humans. They were the immortals, embodying the unyielding spirit of humanity in the face of an overwhelming alien threat. This story, while a single episode in the larger conflict, served as a beacon of hope and resilience. It inspired not just the military, but also civilians across the globe. The immortals were not superhumans or mythical beings. They were ordinary individuals who had showcased extraordinary courage. Their story became a rallying point, a symbol of what could be achieved when humanity stood united against a common foe. Military recruitment and volunteer rates surged in the days that followed, as many sought to emulate the bravery of the immortals. Training programs were adjusted, strategies revised, and plans formulated with the new understanding that the human spirit was an asset as formidable as any weapon in their arsenal. The emergence of the immortals was not just a morale booster, it was a paradigm shift in how humanity viewed itself in the conflict. No longer were they merely defenders of their home, reacting to the moves of a superior enemy. They were now aggressors in their own right, capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the invaders with the resolve and tenacity to go beyond the limits of what was considered possible. The legend of the immortals, those first defiant humans who stood their ground on Luna, rippled through the hearts and minds of Earth's population, igniting a fervor that military leaders were quick to harness. This was the catalyst for a global call to arms, a summoning of the brave and the bold to stand in defense of their planet. The world watched as training camps and military bases, once symbols of national sovereignty, and often division, transformed into crucibles where the defenders of Earth were forged. In these places, boundaries faded. Recruits from Tokyo trained alongside those from New York, Moscow, and Nairobi, each bringing their own strengths, cultures, and determination to the collective effort. The military hierarchies adapted, recognizing that traditional rank and protocol paled in comparison to the need for unity and mutual respect among Earth's warriors. Technology, too, became a unifying force. Scientists and engineers from across the globe collaborated on projects that once seemed the realm of science fiction. Advances in armor technology, weaponry, and tactics evolved at a pace that would have been unimaginable before the alien threat. The shared goal of survival catalyzed breakthroughs, turning theoretical concepts into practical, battle-ready technologies. Training regimens were intense, designed not just to prepare the soldiers for combat, 
but to instill in them the indomitable spirit of the immortals. Simulated battles and strategy sessions often ran around the clock, with veterans of the lunar skirmish, including members of the immortals, leading the charge. Their first-hand experience and unbreakable resolve served as both instruction and inspiration. As the training progressed, stories of individual heroism and collective triumph began to emerge, each adding to the tapestry of human resilience. There was the sharpshooter from Johannesburg whose uncanny aim could disable enemy drones in a single shot, the engineer from Sao Paulo who crafted defensive systems that could withstand alien weaponry, and the strategist from Beijing whose innovative tactics reshaped the battlefield. This period of preparation, while marked by urgency, was also a time of profound camaraderie. Bonds forged in the crucible of impending conflict were strong and transcended all previous divisions. The troops trained not just as soldiers from different nations, but as members of a single, united force with a common purpose. They were Earth's chosen, ready to face the alien threat head-on, each carrying the legacy of the immortals into battle. The rallying of Earth's troops was a testament to humanity's capacity to unite under the banner of a common cause. It was a preparation for war, yes, but also a celebration of human spirit, diversity, and tenacity. As the training camps buzzed with activity and the world braced for the confrontation to come, there was an underlying current of hope. Humanity was ready to stand as one, to fight not just for survival, but for the right to exist on their own terms, as free beings in the vast, unfathomable universe. In the shadow of escalating preparations and the rallying of Earth's forces, a pivotal breakthrough emerged from the collaborative efforts of the world's leading minds. The capture of an alien scout craft, largely intact, during a daring raid on the fringe of the occupied zone, marked the beginning of humanity's technological leap forward. The craft, unlike anything humanity had engineered, was a marvel of technology, blending advanced propulsion, weaponry, and shielding in a seamless design that spoke volumes of the alien's mastery over science. The task of reverse engineering the alien technology fell to a global coalition of scientists and engineers who worked with a sense of urgency fueled by the ticking clock of the imminent invasion. Within the confines of a secure facility, the team embarked on their task, unraveling the secrets of the alien craft piece by piece. The propulsion system, based on principles that defied conventional physics, promised a leap in space travel capabilities. The weaponry, utilizing energy in ways previously unimagined, offered new avenues for Earth's defense. But it was the shielding technology that held the greatest promise, a means to protect Earth's cities and military installations from alien attacks. As breakthroughs were made, the technologies were rapidly deployed to the front lines. New weapon systems, capable of piercing the aliens' previously impenetrable armor, were mounted on Earth's defense craft. Shields, once theoretical, now protected key strategic locations, providing a bulwark against the alien onslaught. The tide of the conflict began to shift, not overtly at first, but in skirmishes and battles where Earth's forces started to hold their ground with increasing confidence. The introduction of these technologies into the theater of war did more than enhance Earth's military capabilities. It rekindled hope among the planet's defenders. Soldiers and civilians alike saw these advancements as tangible evidence of humanity's ability to not only survive, but to challenge the dominion of the aliens. The turning of the tide was not without its setbacks. The aliens adapted to each new innovation with alarming speed, forcing Earth strategists to constantly evolve their tactics. The war became a high-stakes game of chess, with each side countering the other's moves in a relentless struggle for supremacy. Yet, the momentum had shifted. The stories of human ingenuity, defeating alien technology spread like wildfire, igniting a fierce determination across the globe. The people of Earth, once uncertain of their place in the universe, now saw themselves as contenders, warriors forged in the crucible of interstellar conflict, capable of standing up to a seemingly invincible foe. The battle for Earth was far from over, but for the first time since the arrival of the Galactic Dominion, humanity dared to hope. They had seen their potential, not just in the tales of the immortals, but in their collective efforts to rise to the challenge. The tide was turning, and with it, the fate of Earth and its people. As Earth's defenses began to adapt and evolve with the integration of alien technology, a new strategy emerged from the war rooms of the United Coalition Command. 
Recognizing that direct confrontation often played to the aliens' strengths, Earth leaders authorized a series of covert operations aimed at undermining the alien forces' operational capabilities. The initiative, codenamed Shadow Strike, was designed to hit the aliens where they were most vulnerable, supply lines, communication networks, and reconnaissance outposts. The operatives chosen for Shadow Strike were a mix of elite soldiers, intelligence agents, and scientists. Individuals who had shown exceptional skill, ingenuity, and courage in the face of the enemy. They were the best of humanity, tasked with carrying out missions that would require them to venture deep into hostile territory, often with little hope of backup or rescue. The first of these missions targeted an alien communication relay stationed on one of Jupiter's moons. The relay, a spindly tower of gleaming metal and pulsating energy, was believed to be a linchpin in the aliens' interstellar communication network. Destroying it would not only disrupt their command and control capabilities, but also send a clear message. Earth was fighting back, not just defensively, but with the intent to reclaim its place in the galaxy. The team tasked with this mission, codenamed Echo, consisted of five individuals, each with a specialized skill set. Their approach was stealthy, utilizing a modified shuttle with cloaking capabilities derived from the reverse-engineered alien technology. As they neared the moon, the tension was palpable, each member acutely aware of the mission's significance and the dangers that lay ahead. The operation was meticulously planned. Two operatives, experts in alien technology, would infiltrate the relay to plant a series of explosive charges designed to cause a cascading failure in the structure. The others would provide cover, employing a combination of human and alien weaponry to defend against any retaliatory response. The mission was a success but not without cost. The relay was destroyed, sending shockwaves through the alien command structure. But Echo Team suffered casualties. Two members were lost, their sacrifice a stark reminder of the stakes involved in this shadow war. News of the mission's success and the bravery of Echo Team spread quickly among Earth's forces, bolstering morale and proving the effectiveness of guerrilla tactics against a technologically superior foe. Shadow Strike operations continued, each one pushing the aliens further on the defensive, disrupting their supply chains, and sowing confusion within their ranks. These strikes, though small in scale, played a crucial role in the broader conflict. They exemplified humanity's resilience, creativity, and willingness to take risks in the face of overwhelming odds. The Shadow War, fought in the hidden corners of the solar system, became a testament to the depth of Earth's strategic capabilities and the indomitable spirit of its defenders. In the shadowed alleys of the war, amidst the silence that fell between the cacophony of battles, a narrative began to weave itself into the fabric of the human resistance. It was a story born from the ashes of conflict, nurtured in the quiet moments of courage, and spread like wildfire through the ranks of Earth's defenders and beyond. The tale was not of a single victory or loss, but of the very essence of humanity's struggle against the alien forces. It centered around the immortals, but as the war progressed, it evolved to include every soldier who stood against the impossible. The Immortals, initially a term for the squad that had defied death on Luna, became a moniker for all who displayed extraordinary bravery and resilience. Soldiers who walked through fire and emerged scarred but unbowed, pilots who navigated the maelstrom of space battles and returned with tales of audacity, medics who braved the front lines to save their comrades, each became part of the legend. This evolving mythos served as a beacon of hope and a source of strength. The stories of the immortals were told and retold in barracks and bunkers, in the brief respites between assaults, and in the quiet moments before sleep claimed the weary. They became a symbol of what humanity was fighting for, not just survival, but the right to live on their terms, to not go gentle into that good night. As the legend grew, so did the impact of the immortals on the war's psychology. Alien forces began to encounter an enemy that seemed to grow more determined with each skirmish. Reports filtered back to their command of humans who would not yield, whose resolve seemed to harden in the face of adversity. The tales of the immortals, though dismissed as mere morale-boosting myths by some alien tacticians, began to sow seeds of doubt among the invaders. How do you defeat a foe that refuses to acknowledge defeat? For the people of Earth, the immortals became a symbol of their collective spirit. Civilians, too, drawn into the conflict in countless ways, found solace and inspiration in the stories. Children played at being immortals, 
rescuing worlds and battling foes with the indomitable spirit the tales inspired. Artists, writers, and filmmakers captured the essence of the immortals in their works, spreading the legend far and wide. But perhaps the most profound impact was on those who had taken up arms against the alien threat. The legend of the immortals reminded them of the stakes of their fight and the importance of their role in the history of their species. It gave a face to their courage and a voice to their defiance. In every soldier, there was the heart of an immortal, beating strong with the conviction that as long as they stood together, humanity would never be conquered. The whispers of immortality thus were not just about the legend of a few, but a testament to the resilience of all. In the darkest hours of the conflict, these whispers became a roar, a unifying cry that echoed through the corridors of power on Earth and across the battle-scarred expanses of space. They declared that humanity, in its quest for survival, had found something even more powerful, a reason to fight, a reason to hope, and a reason to endure. The momentum of the war began to shift in ways that even the most optimistic among Earth's command could scarcely have believed. This change wasn't heralded by a single dramatic victory, nor was it marked by the unveiling of a superweapon. Instead, it was a gradual accumulation of small successes, hard-won skirmishes, and the relentless pressure applied by the Shadow Strike operations. Humanity was learning, adapting, and most importantly, starting to anticipate the moves of their alien adversaries. Central to this evolving dynamic was the application of guerrilla tactics on a scale that spanned the solar system. Earth's forces, once reactive, became shadows themselves, ghosts that haunted the alien supply lines, ambushed their scouting parties, and vanished before retribution could be meted out. These tactics were born of necessity, but honed by the growing expertise and confidence of Earth's defenders. A series of coordinated attacks across multiple fronts demonstrated the newfound boldness of the human resistance. One notable operation involved a daring raid on an alien refueling station near Saturn. The station, a crucial node in the alien logistics network, was believed to be impenetrable, shielded not only by its defenses, but by the sheer audacity required to attack it. Yet, attack it they did. A fleet of human ships, small and nimble, breached the perimeter and laid waste to the station before slipping away into the void, leaving a burning husk in their wake. These victories, though significant, were not without cost. Every gain was paid for in the currency of bravery and blood. The names of ships lost and heroes fallen added new chapters to the legend of the immortals, each tale a testament to the price of defiance. Yet, it was this very defiance that began to wear down the resolve of the alien forces. Reports intercepted from the enemy spoke of a growing wariness, a realization that the humans they sought to subjugate were not the easy prey they had anticipated. Amidst the strategic and tactical successes, a profound psychological warfare was being waged. The stories of the immortals, the audacity of the guerrilla attacks, and the resilience of Earth's people began to fracture the once monolithic certainty of the alien invaders. Doubts crept in, whispers of concern that maybe, just maybe, they had underestimated the will and capability of humanity. On Earth, the turning of the tides brought a cautious optimism. Broadcasts, once filled with grim updates and casualty reports, began to feature stories of triumph and survival. Civilians who had lived under the shadow of fear started to allow themselves hope. This shift in morale was palpable, a tangible force that bolstered the home front and provided a renewed drive to support the war effort. The war was far from over, but for the first time, there was a sense that victory was within the realm of possibility. Humanity, united under the banner of survival and spurred on by the legend of the immortals, was no longer fighting just to endure another day. They were fighting to win, to secure a future where Earth and its inhabitants could once again look to the stars not with fear, but with wonder and ambition. As the alien forces regrouped, facing an enemy unlike any they had encountered, the people of Earth prepared for the next phase of the conflict. With each skirmish, each operation, they were not just turning the tides of war, they were reshaping the destiny of humanity. As Earth's defenders began to taste the sweetness of hope, the alien command, feeling the bite of unexpected resistance, plotted a decisive blow that would crush the burgeoning spirit of humanity. Their target was Titan, Saturn's largest moon, 
which had become a crucial hub for Earth's interstellar efforts, a place where technology, strategy, and hope converged. Titan's significance lay not only in its strategic position within the solar system, but also in the symbolic defiance it represented. It was a testament to human expansion and resilience, housing research facilities that were vital in understanding alien technology and developing countermeasures. Its fall would deal a crippling blow to Earth's war effort and morale. The aliens launched their siege with a ferocity unmatched in the conflict thus far. Waves of ships descended upon Titan, their weapons blazing trails of destruction across the moon's surface. The skies above Titan, usually a tranquil expanse of stars and the distant glow of Saturn, became a canvas of explosions and chaos. Earth's forces, forewarned by the intelligence gathered from previous encounters, were prepared. The defenses of Titan, bolstered by the newly developed technologies and the strategic genius of Earth's best minds, held firm against the initial onslaught. The battle for Titan turned into a grueling siege, with neither side yielding an inch. The defenders of Titan, a mix of scientists, soldiers, and engineers, fought with a desperation born of understanding what was at stake. They knew that Titan was more than just a moon. It was a symbol of humanity's refusal to be extinguished, a beacon of hope in the dark void of space. Among them were those who had earned their place in the legend of the immortals, their presence inspiring their comrades to feats of bravery and sacrifice. As the siege wore on, the moon's surface was scarred by the constant exchange of fire, a testament to the determination of its defenders. The battle became a war of attrition, with both sides suffering losses, but neither willing to retreat. It was during these dark hours that the true strength of Titan's defenders came to the fore. Their ingenuity, honed through years of adversity, allowed them to adapt and counter the alien tactics with remarkable effectiveness. The turning point came when a daring counteroffensive, led by a squadron of elite pilots, breached the alien blockade. They delivered a decisive blow to the command ship, utilizing a prototype weapon that had been developed in Titan's very laboratories. The attack sent ripples through the alien fleet, sowing chaos and confusion among their ranks. Seizing the moment, the ground forces on Titan launched a coordinated assault, pushing back the invaders with a ferocity that echoed the legends of the immortals. The battle raged for hours, but as the sun rose over Titan's horizon, casting long shadows over the battlefield, it became clear that the defenders had prevailed. The victory at Titan was a turning point in the war, a clear signal that humanity was not only capable of defending its territory, but also of striking back with decisive force. The siege, though a harrowing ordeal, became a symbol of human tenacity, a beacon of hope that shone across the solar system. The moon's defenders, weary but unbroken, looked to the stars with a renewed sense of purpose, knowing that their efforts had secured not just Titan, but also the future of humanity's resistance against the alien threat. In the wake of Titan's defense, a palpable shift swept through humanity's ranks, a fusion of relief and emboldened spirit. The siege's outcome had far exceeded a tactical victory. It had become a rallying cry, a testament to human resilience that reverberated across planets and outposts. Earth's strategic command capitalized on this momentum, orchestrating a series of aggressive maneuvers designed to reclaim territories and disrupt alien operations on a scale previously deemed impossible. Central to this new offensive was Operation Fury Unleashed, a campaign that embodied humanity's rage and desire for retribution. It was a multifaceted assault, targeting several critical alien holdings across the solar system. The operation's planning was meticulous, with Earth's commanders utilizing intelligence gathered from the Shadow Strike missions and the insights gained from the analysis of alien technology. The first wave of the offensive was a series of precision strikes on alien supply depots located on Mars. These depots were vital to the aliens' sustained military presence in the solar system, storing everything from munitions to rations. Special units, including squads that had become legends in their own right alongside the immortals, led these strikes. Equipped with stealth technology and armed with weapons reverse-engineered from alien designs, they executed their missions with lethal efficiency, leaving destruction in their wake. Simultaneously, a coalition fleet, the largest assembled since the war began, engaged the alien armada in orbit around Earth. The battle was fierce, with both sides suffering significant losses. However, 
the humans fought with a desperation and cunning honed through years of conflict. Utilizing guerrilla tactics, they managed to isolate and destroy key alien ships, breaking the Armada's cohesion and forcing them into a tactical retreat. As news of these victories spread, so did stories of individual heroism and strategic genius. They spoke of pilots navigating through meteor storms to ambush alien cruisers, of engineers hacking into alien systems to turn their weapons against them, and of soldiers holding lines against overwhelming odds, refusing to yield. Each story added to the burgeoning mythos of the human resistance, fueling the fires of determination and hope. Meanwhile, on the home front, these victories sparked celebrations not seen since the war's onset. Civilians, who had lived under the shadow of fear and uncertainty, took to the streets in jubilation, their cheers a cathartic release of pent-up emotions. Yet, even amidst the festivities, there was a palpable sense of solemnity, a collective acknowledgement of the sacrifices that had paved the way for this moment of triumph. Operation Fury Unleashed marked a turning point in the conflict, a clear demonstration that the tide of war was shifting in humanity's favor. The victories, though costly, were a declaration that humanity would not be subjugated, that the spirit of the immortals was alive in every soldier, pilot, and citizen who dared to stand against the darkness. As the remnants of the alien forces regrouped, licking their wounds and reassessing their underestimation of human resolve, Earth's defenders prepared for the next phase of the conflict. They knew that the war was far from over, but for the first time, victory seemed not just a distant dream, but a tangible goal. Humanity had unleashed its fury, and in doing so, had begun to forge its path towards reclaiming its future. Following the sweeping victories of Operation Fury Unleashed, humanity's momentum surged, propelling their forces toward what many hoped would be the final confrontation. Intelligence had pinpointed the location of a massive alien command center hidden within the asteroid belt, a fortress that coordinated the invaders' operations across the solar system. The decision was made. Earth's forces would launch a direct assault on this stronghold, a daring strike aiming to decapitate the alien command structure and end the war. The plan was audacious, requiring a level of coordination and bravery that surpassed all previous engagements. Named Immortals Stand, in honor of those who had epitomized human resilience, the operation was the culmination of humanity's journey from the brink of despair to the cusp of victory. The Immortals, alongside newly minted heroes from the recent battles, formed the vanguard of the assault, embodying the spirit and determination that had turned the tide of war in humanity's favor. As the human fleet navigated the treacherous terrain of the asteroid belt, the alien fortress loomed ahead, a monolith of dark metal and pulsing energy shields. It was a fortress that had once seemed impregnable, a symbol of the alien threat that had hung over humanity for so long. Now it stood as the final barrier to peace, a challenge that Earth's defenders were determined to overcome. The battle that ensued was unlike any that had come before. The space around the asteroid became a maelstrom of fire and debris as human ships darted through the chaos, their weapons blazing with defiance. Ground forces, including the Immortals, engaged alien defenders in fierce combat, fighting their way toward the heart of the fortress with unyielding resolve. Amidst the fury of battle, acts of incredible heroism unfolded. A pilot, callsign Nova, led a desperate charge against an alien dreadnought, sacrificing herself to create an opening for her comrades. A young engineer known only as Tinker rigged a series of explosives that brought down the fortress's shield generator, turning the tide of the ground assault. And in the heart of the enemy stronghold, the Immortals faced the alien commander in a final, decisive confrontation. The battle raged for hours, but as the alien command center began to collapse, a cheer went up from the human forces. They had done the impossible, breaching the heart of darkness and striking a blow from which the invaders would not recover. The fortress's destruction was not just a military victory, it was a symbol of humanity's indomitable spirit a beacon of hope that shone brightly in the darkness of space. As the remnants of the human fleet regrouped, messages of victory spread like wildfire across the solar system. People on Earth and the colonies wept and embraced, their relief and joy uncontained by distance or despair. The Immortals' stand would be remembered not just as a battle, but as the moment when humanity reclaimed its future from the clutches of oblivion.
The war was not yet over, and challenges remained, but the victory at the alien fortress marked a turning point. Humanity had faced the might of a galactic invader and emerged victorious. The path ahead would be one of rebuilding and vigilance, but for the first time in years, there was a sense of hope, a belief that after the longest night, dawn was finally breaking. As the dust settled on the ruins of the alien command center, a profound silence swept through the cosmos. The victory achieved by humanity's daring assault, dubbed the Immortal Stand, resonated far beyond the smoldering debris and the celebrations of Earth and its colonies. For the first time since their incursion into human space, the alien invaders led by their enigmatic general faced the specter of defeat, a scenario unfathomable to a civilization that had traversed the stars, subjugating world after world with cold efficiency. The alien general, a being of immense intellect and strategic acumen, watched in disbelief as his fortress, the nexus of his power in the solar system, crumbled under the relentless assault of these resilient humans. The fortress had stood as a beacon of dominance, a symbol of the inevitable conquest the general had orchestrated across countless systems. Yet, in the face of human defiance, it had fallen, a testament to the unpredictable nature of this war. In the quiet of his command ship, orbiting a distant planet, the general replayed the battle's final moments, searching for understanding in the chaos of defeat. How had these humans, with their primitive technology and fragmented societies, overcome the might of his forces? The question gnawed at him, a puzzle that defied the logic of his extensive experience. The general had witnessed the resilience of humanity before, the tales of the immortals, the guerrilla strikes that had harried his supply lines, the unexpected technological advancements. Yet, he had dismissed these as minor setbacks, anomalies in the grand scheme of his conquest. The fall of his fortress forced a reevaluation, not just of his strategy, but of the very assumptions that had guided his campaign against Earth. Haunted by the specter of failure, the general convened his advisors, a council of beings who had overseen the subjugation of worlds. The discussions were tense, fraught with the realization that their approach had underestimated the variable of human spirit, a factor that had no counterpart in their previous campaigns. The advisors debated their next course of action, but the undercurrent of fear was palpable. If Earth's defenders could breach the fortress, what was to prevent them from liberating their entire solar system? As the Council deliberated, a plan began to take shape, a final devastating strike designed to crush the spirit of humanity once and for all. Yet the General found himself hesitating, an unfamiliar sensation. For the first time, he questioned the inevitability of his victory. The resilience of the humans, their capacity for innovation and unity in the face of annihilation, had sown a seed of doubt. In the solitude of his quarters, the general gazed upon the stars, a panorama of worlds conquered and yet to be conquered. But now his gaze lingered on the small, defiant blue dot that was Earth. What was it about this world and its inhabitants that defied his understanding? The horror he felt was not of defeat, but of realization. The realization that in the quest for conquest, he had encountered a force unlike any other a force rooted not in technology or weaponry, but in the indomitable will to survive and thrive. The war was far from over, but the battle at the alien fortress had irrevocably changed its course. For the general and his legions, the path ahead was uncertain, shadowed by the resilience of a species that had transformed from prey to predator. The horror that gripped him was a testament to the new truth of this conflict. Humanity would not go quietly into the night, and the galaxy would never be the same. In the aftermath of the immortal stand, humanity, fueled by the energy of an unprecedented victory, pushed forward with relentless determination. The focus now shifted to a series of critical battles designed to reclaim occupied territories and secure Earth's position in the solar system. Central to these efforts was the liberation of Earth's moon, a strategic and symbolic objective that had suffered under alien occupation since the early days of the war. The operation, codenamed Eyes of the Storm, was a massive undertaking, involving the largest assembly of Earth's fleet since the conflict began. The moon, with its scars from the occupation and its strategic value as a launchpad for further operations, became the stage for what many hoped would be a definitive turn in humanity's favor. The plan was multifaceted, combining space-borne assaults 
with ground operations aimed at dislodging the entrenched alien forces. The human commanders, veterans of countless skirmishes and battles, drew upon every lesson learned, every hardship endured, to craft a strategy that would not only liberate the moon, but also serve as a blueprint for the liberation of other occupied territories. As the human fleet approached, the alien defenders braced for the onslaught. The initial phase of the operation saw a barrage of precision strikes against key alien positions, utilizing the advanced weaponry developed from reverse-engineered alien technology. These strikes were not merely attacks but also a statement of intent, a declaration that humanity was no longer on the defensive, but was now taking the fight to the enemy. Ground forces, including contingents of the Immortals, landed under the cover of orbital bombardment, engaging alien forces in intense combat. The battle for the moon's surface was grueling, a testament to the tenacity of both the human soldiers and their alien adversaries. Yet amid the chaos of battle, the human forces found strength in their unity and purpose, driven by the dream of seeing Earth's satellite free from alien control. The liberation of the moon was not achieved in a single decisive victory, but through a series of brutal engagements that tested the resolve of Earth's defenders. Each crater and outpost became a battleground, each victory hard won. But as the final alien stronghold fell, the significance of the moment transcended the strategic victory. The moon, long a symbol of humanity's aspirations and vulnerabilities, was free once more. The victory was broadcast across Earth and the colonies, a beacon of hope and a message of defiance. Celebrations erupted, not with the unrestrained joy that had followed the fall of the alien command center, but with a solemn sense of achievement and a recognition of the sacrifices made. The liberation of the moon was a milestone, a moment when humanity took a decisive step forward in reclaiming not just territory, but its future. Eyes of the storm became a symbol of humanity's resilience, a reminder that even in the darkest times, there is potential for triumph. The battle-hardened soldiers, the architects of the victory, looked up at the night sky, where the moon shone brighter than it had in years, a beacon of liberated humanity, watching over a world united in purpose and spirit. The path ahead remained fraught with challenges, but the liberation of the moon stood as a testament to what could be achieved when humanity stood together against the storm. The liberation of Earth's moon, a triumph celebrated across the globe and beyond, heralded a new phase in humanity's fight for survival and sovereignty. With the alien stronghold now a smoldering ruin, the collective gaze of Earth's forces turned towards the remaining occupied territories, each a step on the path towards total liberation. The operation to free the moon had demonstrated a newfound mastery over the alien technology and tactics. But more importantly, it had showcased the indomitable human spirit, a force that seemed to grow stronger in the face of adversity. The momentum gained from the moon's liberation propelled Earth's commanders to strategize a series of coordinated strikes designed to dismantle the alien presence in the solar system systematically. These were not mere military maneuvers. They were a manifestation of humanity's refusal to be extinguished, a testament to the will to endure and reclaim what was rightfully theirs. Among the targeted territories was Mars, a planet that bore the scars of alien occupation and human resistance alike. The Red Planet, with its strategic importance as a forward base for the alien invaders, became the next battleground in humanity's quest for freedom. Operation Red Resurgence, as it was dubbed, aimed to uproot the alien forces entrenched across Mars, utilizing guerrilla tactics perfected in previous battles and the lessons learned from the Immortals stand. As Earth's forces descended upon Mars, they encountered a resistance that was both fierce and desperate. The alien defenders, aware of the strategic loss the moon represented, fought with a brutality born of the fear that their grip on the solar system was slipping. However, Earth soldiers, fueled by the victories of their comrades and the collective hope of their species, met them with equal ferocity, their resolve steeled by the knowledge of what was at stake. The battles across Mars were intense and unforgiving, with every hill and crater becoming a testament to the determination of Earth's defenders. The red dust of the planet became mingled with the scars of war, a silent witness to the cost of freedom. Yet amid the desolation, there were moments of profound bravery and sacrifice that echoed the legacy of the immortals, inspiring all who fought on the front lines. The turning point on Mars came with the fall of the Helios Basin, 
a major alien command hub that coordinated the occupation forces across the planet. Its capture, through a daring assault led by a contingent of Earth's finest, marked the beginning of the end for the alien presence on Mars. The liberation of the Helios Basin was not just a strategic victory. It was a symbol of the crumbling alien resolve and the unassailable will of humanity. As the last of the alien forces were driven from Mars, the planet joined the moon as a beacon of human resilience and victory. The Red Resurgence, while a campaign marked by loss and hardship, was also a celebration of humanity's enduring spirit, a spirit that refused to bend even under the crushing weight of alien subjugation. The liberation of Mars represented a critical juncture in the war, a clear signal that humanity was on the ascendant, that the tide had indeed turned. From the ruins of occupied territories emerged a unified Earth, a civilization no longer defined by its divisions, but by its collective strength and determination to persevere. The will to endure, exemplified in every soldier, every strategist, and every civilian who contributed to the war effort, became the foundation upon which the future would be built. As Earth's forces prepared for the challenges that lay ahead, they did so with the knowledge that their unity, resilience, and courage had shifted the balance of power in their favor, lighting the way towards ultimate victory. With the red sands of Mars now free from alien control, humanity's campaign for liberation continued with renewed vigor. The echoes of victory resonated across the solar system, inspiring those still under occupation and reminding all of Earth's resilience. Yet, amidst the strategic planning and celebrations, Earth's leaders knew that the hardest battle was yet to come. The alien forces, though reeling from their losses, were regrouping for a final, desperate stand. This looming confrontation would determine the fate of humanity and the future of the solar system. The alien fleet, battered but not yet broken, had retreated to a stronghold located in the shadow of Jupiter's swirling storms. This fortress, hidden among the gas giant's moons, represented the last significant alien command center and their final hope for quelling the human uprising. Earth's intelligence had named this stronghold Fortress Desolation, a monolith of alien engineering designed to be impregnable. Operation Celestial Spear was the codename given to the mission to assault Fortress Desolation. It was humanity's most ambitious operation, a culmination of years of struggle, sacrifice, and relentless pursuit of freedom. The plan involved a multi-pronged assault, leveraging every piece of alien technology they had reverse-engineered, every strategy they had developed, and the indomitable spirit of their soldiers. The days leading up to the operation were tense, with Earth's forces gathering in the shadow of Jupiter, preparing for the battle that would decide their fate. The Immortals, now a legendary unit known across the human territories, were at the forefront, their presence a rallying point for the soldiers and a symbol of the courage required to face the challenges ahead. As the operation commenced, the vastness of space around Jupiter became a battlefield of epic proportions. Human ships, outnumbered but undeterred, engaged the alien defenders in a dance of death and destruction. The battle raged across the void, a testament to the ferocity and determination of Earth's defenders. On the surface of one of Jupiter's moons, ground forces launched their assault on fortress desolation. The fighting was brutal, with every meter gain paid for in blood. The alien defenders, realizing the symbolic and strategic importance of the fortress, fought with a desperation born of knowing their reign of terror was nearing its end. Amidst the chaos of battle, a team of Earth's elite, including members of the Immortals, managed to infiltrate the heart of the fortress. Their mission was to disable the fortress's defenses, allowing the rest of Earth's forces to deliver the final blow. The task was Herculean, requiring them to navigate a labyrinth of alien technology and confront the fortress's defenders in close quarters. The climax of the operation came as the team reached the fortress's core, engaging in a final, desperate confrontation with the alien command. In those moments, the fate of humanity hung in the balance, a knife edge of hope and despair. When the detonations echoed through fortress desolation, signaling the destruction of its core, a cheer went up among Earth's forces. The fortress, the last bastion of alien power in the solar system, was falling. The victory was not just tactical, but symbolic, representing the end of the alien threat and the beginning of a new era for humanity. As news of the operation's success spread, 
celebrations erupted across Earth and its colonies. People wept, embraced, and looked to the stars with eyes full of dreams once more. The victory at Fortress Desolation was a testament to humanity's enduring spirit, their capacity to face the darkness and emerge into the light. Operation Celestial Spear would be remembered not just as the battle that ended the war, but as a moment when humanity reclaimed its place in the cosmos, united by a common cause and strengthened by the trials they had endured. The last hope of the alien invaders had been extinguished, and from the ashes of war, a new hope for peace and prosperity arose, a beacon for future generations. In the aftermath of Operation Celestial Spear, the remnants of the alien fleet, leaderless and broken, scattered across the stars, leaving behind a solar system forever changed by the crucible of war. Humanity's victory at Fortress Desolation marked not only the liberation of their home and colonies, but also a pivotal moment in galactic history. The once invincible threat that had loomed over humanity was vanquished, and in its wake, a new dawn emerged for Earth and its people. The days following the operation were a time of reflection and mourning, as much as they were of celebration. Memorials were erected on every planet and moon where battles had been fought, honoring those who had made the ultimate sacrifice. The immortals, alongside countless other heroes of the war, were commemorated, their names etched in stone and memory, a reminder of the cost of freedom. Amidst the solemn remembrances, a sense of unity and purpose blossomed. Humanity, having faced annihilation, emerged not only survived, but strengthened. The divisions that had once fractured Earth societies seemed trivial in the face of what had been achieved together. The war had forged a collective identity, a recognition that more united them than divided them. The victory also ushered in a period of rapid technological advancement and exploration. Alien technology, now fully accessible, propelled human capabilities forward by leaps and bounds. The mysteries of the galaxy, once beyond reach, beckoned with new promise. Earth scientists and explorers set their sights on distant stars, motivated by curiosity and the drive to ensure that humanity would never again be caught unprepared. Diplomatically, Earth became a beacon of resilience and defiance. The story of humanity's stand against the alien invaders resonated throughout the galaxy, reaching civilizations hidden in the farthest reaches of space. Alliances were forged, and Earth found its place in a broader community of starfaring species, united by a common desire for peace and mutual protection. As the solar system began to heal, the focus turned to rebuilding and expanding. Colonies on Mars, the Moon, and beyond flourished, becoming testaments to human ingenuity and determination. The war had taught humanity the importance of vigilance and the value of every life, lessons that shaped the governance and ethos of the new society that rose from the war's ashes. The era following the Galactic Reckoning was marked by a renaissance of culture, science, and exploration. Humanity's brush with extinction had imbued them with a profound appreciation for life and an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. The arts and sciences flourished, fueled by the collective relief of survival and the boundless optimism for the future. As Earth and its colonies celebrated the anniversary of the victory, looking back on the years of conflict and forward to the promise of peace, a solemn vow was made. Never again would humanity find itself on the brink, unprepared and divided. The sacrifices of those who had fought and fallen would be honored through a commitment to unity, exploration, and stewardship of their home and the galaxy at large. The Galactic Reckoning had closed a chapter in human history, but it had opened countless others, each brimming with potential. Humanity had proven its resilience, its capacity to face the darkest of nights, and emerge into the dawn. Now, under the vast canopy of stars, they stood ready to forge their destiny, united as a species with eyes wide open to the wonders of the universe.